Today I'm going to show you a complete beginner's guide of GPT-4, starting with the initial setup process and then going into some prompts. We're going to dive into some tips, tricks, and hidden features allowing you to lead this video as a GPT-4 expert. Let's get started. What's GPT-4 you may ask? It's OpenAI's newest language model. And as you can see here, GPT-4 is OpenAI's most advanced system producing safer and more useful responses. This model is much more powerful than ChatGPT 3.5, and it can solve difficult problems with greater accuracy. So let's check it out. You'll need to log in with your OpenAI account at chat.openai.com. You can click the link in the description and sign up if you don't have an account, or go ahead and log in if you do have an account. I'm going to continue with Google. All right, now that I'm inside of ChatGPT, you'll need to upgrade your account to Plus in order to get access to GPT-4. So in the lower left corner of your screen, you'll see an option where it says Upgrade to Plus, New. You'll go ahead and click on that, and then it says ChatGPT Plus. It's $20 a month in US dollars. You can click the Upgrade plan. You get availability when it's high demand faster response speed and pri priority access to new features, which is chat GPT alongside of GPT-4. So you'll hit that upgrade button and it'll take you to a Stripe page where you can enter in all of your credit card information and sign up for chat GPT plus to get access to GPT-4. That's the only way to get access to chat GPT or chat GPT-4 right now so go ahead and sign up for that and then you'll be presented with a new option to use their latest model for gpt4 once you've upgraded to chat gpt plus you'll have an option at the very top of your screen to select the model that you want to use once you click on it there are three options here where we've got the default gpt model 3.5 it's optimized for speed and currently available to plus users its reasoning is 3 out of 5, its speed is 5 out of 5, and its consciousness is 2 out of 5. You've got Legacy, the older ChatGPT 3.5 model, where its reasoning is 3 out of 5, the speed is 2 out of 5, and the consciousness is 1 out of 5. But then we've got the brand new Chat. GPT alongside of GPT-4, the brand new model, our most advanced model yet, available to Plus subscribers. That's us. Let's go ahead and click on it again. And it says that it excels at tasks that require advanced reasoning, complex instruction understanding, and more creativity. So it's even more creative. That's awesome. Its reasoning is 5 out of 5, its speed is 2 out of 5, and its consciousness is 4 out of 5. So in order to get access to this brand new GPT-4 model, you will need to be upgraded to ChatGPT+. You'll get this option right here where you can click on the model and scroll down to the GPT-4 model, and then you have access to it. It has a little footnote here where it says GPT-4 currently has a cap of 100 messages every four hours. So you can switch back to the older model just by clicking at the top, getting the default GPT-3.5 model, and then we can switch back to the GPT-4 model. So let's go ahead and compare you know, the default GPT-3.5 model to the brand new GPT-4 model. Let's go ahead and start off with the default GPT-3.5 model. And one of the examples they provide here is a scheduling example. Andrew is free from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Joanne is free from noon to 2 p.m. and then 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Hannah is available at noon for half an hour and then 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. What are some options for start times for a 30-minute meeting for Andrew, Hannah, and Joanne? Now you can see that this is a super complex prompt because there's multiple time spots that people are available at. And if we look at Joanne, she's available from noon to 2 in addition to 3.30 to 5 p.m. That's, you know, two time windows that ChatGPT and this new model has to understand. We're going to test it out with the 3.5 model and see how it performs. So we'll go ahead and send that off. And then it says, based off the availability of three individuals, here are some possible times for a 30-minute meeting. And it lists out three options. One option's at 11.30 a.m., one option's at 4.30 p.m., and another option is at 5 p.m. So it says, note, these are just a few options. There might be other possible start times, but depending on the availability 
depending on the availability and pre preferences of the individuals involved. So we can see with this model, it uh, you know spit out three options. It's pretty fast. Um, you know when we're on the plus version of ChatGPT, it spits out things very fast. Let's go ahead and test this out on the GPT-4 model and see what kind of results we get. So we'll go ahead and we'll paste this same example as the demo that they have provided on their website. And it says to provide the overlapping availability for 30 minute meetings for Andrew, Joanne, and Hannah, we can examine the time slots where all three have free time. Here are some options. So we can see that this new model, it is a bit slower. It takes more time for it to process the data. Um, and it, it says that we have one option, 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Andrew is free from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Joanne is free from noon to 2 p.m. Hannah is available at noon for half an hour. There are no overlapping time slots where all three are available for a 30-minute meeting. And that's interesting because the first model provided three options where you had an overlapping time for someone to meet. I'm going to click Regenerate Response and see if it does a better job but it looks like on this new model it was not able to provide an answer for this example um, so it continues it lists out here the available time slots for each person we got andrew from 11 to 3 joanne it lists out everything that we just gave it um, and now it says we find the following options for a 30 minute meeting so it looks like it failed on that first attempt if we I don't want to go back on the first one yet because um, it did not find the 30 minute meeting spot for everyone to meet, but it does successfully do it on the second attempt here. Comparing their schedules, we find the following options for a 30 minute meeting, 12 p.m. to 12.30, 4 p.m. to 4.30. So there are two possible options for 30 minute meetings, 12 p.m. to 12.30 and 4 p.m p.m. to 4.30. So I'm really curious if I scroll back to this first options, it says that there are no overlapping time spots, but there were overlapping time spots because the chat uh, GPT was able to successfully use the 3.5 model and find it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, say that this isn't true. There are overlapping time slots, but chat GPT did not provide them. So one cool thing here is I'm able to click the down the dislike button and provide OpenAI with feedback because clearly there are overlapping time slots and it did not successfully provide them in this first go around using the brand new model, but I was able to regenerate a response and it was able to compare their schedules and spit out multiple different times of when everyone was able to meet. So there are some ups and downs. Um, if we go back to the new chat and we want to compare them again, the speed of chat or GPT on the GPT-4 model is a two out of five compared to the speed on the GPT-3.5 model with chat GPT, we've got a five out of five. So the, uh, the older model can spit out answers quickly. This newer model, it takes a little bit more time. And as we can see on the first go around here, it was not successful, but we're able to regenerate and it did. Um, so this model can be more powerful, but you've got to look at your cons and pros depending on which model you are currently using. You have options to choose the older one or the newer one, um, but it is a bit more advanced. So let's take a look at what else is available here with our brand new GPT-4 model. Another great thing about ChatGPT and its GPT-4 model is that it can understand visual input. So you can accept images and inputs and generate captions, classifications, and analysis. So here for the example they provide, we've got the input. What can I make with these ingredients? We've got some flour, eggs, and we can scroll down and it analyzes all of that and puts out there are many options for what you can make with these ingredients. Some possibilities include pancakes, waffles, crepes, French toast, omelet, and it continues to list on and on. These are just a few examples, but the possibilities are endless. And it's pretty incredible that as a developer that you can make an application and receive an image as an input and then use chat GPT and the GPT-4 model to read what was on that image and then output text based off 
what uh, your analysis is. So this new model for GPT-4 is super powerful, whether you're inputting text or whether it's reading an image, it can process and analyze these images and these text inputs and provide you know creative, smart, and um, you know very impressive outputs based off the data that it receives when it reads that image or when it reads and processes that text that you provided. Another fun thing is it's able to process more data now. So GPT-4 is capable of handling over 2,500 words of text. So this is much larger than the previous GPT 3.5 model. So we can see from this example, it was able to analyze the entire Wikipedia page of Rihanna and then describe her Super Bowl performance and what made it special. And there is a lot of text. If we're to copy this over and type in this, if we scroll through here, this is a lot of information to analyze. Uh, you know, this could be printed out over several pages here. And ChatGPT with the brand new GPT-4 model was able to analyze that text and describe what made her performance very special. Let's give this a try right now. We're on Rihanna's Wikipedia page. I'm gonna go down to you know her current performance here. That she just recently did the Super Bowl halftime show. I'm gonna copy this. Let's see how many words this is. So it's about 300 words, 282. I'm gonna head over to our GPT-4 model and paste in the current copied information that I took from her Wikipedia page. And then the example that we have here describe her Super Bowl performance and what made it special. So I'll put that at the top with the Wikipedia page information at the bottom and we'll send this off to the new model for GPT-4 and it starts to respond. So Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime show was highly anticipated and critically acclaimed performance that marked her first live performance in over five years. The show had a total of 118.7 million viewers across TV and digital platforms, making it the most watched halftime show in history behind Katy, or the second most watched halftime show in history behind Katy Perry's Super Bowl halftime show. So it continues to describe here, you know, it's on paragraph four, it's saying, in addition to the halftime show, Rihanna contributed to the lead single, Lift Me Up, in Black Panther. Uh, and it has summarized this for us and described what made it special. So it's pretty incredible that you can paste in this content, that the GPT-4 model is highly smart and creative and capable of summarizing lots of inform information. So we can have, you know, two or three or four paragraphs of data inputted in, and then it can spit out an, uh, you know, a reasonable response of what was important in that information. And it's really cool that it can provide all of this data for us. Now, what really makes this model special is for developers. Developers, when they make applications, they can use this GPT-4 model inside of their own application with this thing called an API, an application programming interface. And there are a few developers that have already integrated GPT-4 inside of their platform. We did a video on one last week and it was on the new Bing. If we go to the new Bing page here, if you've used Microsoft's new Bing, it was using GPT-4 all along, and we had no idea. But OpenAI has publicly announced this new model that we've just been demoing, and the Microsoft Bing AI chat search engine was built upon this GPT GPT-4 model. So that's pretty impressive um, that, you know, they've had access to it and then we have used it and demoed it uh, without knowing that it was GPT-4. So Bing has had access to it. And if we go back to GPT-4 on the OpenAI website, we can scroll down and see at the very bottom, a few other cool platforms have had access to this brand new GPT-4 model. Delinguo introduced a new subscription called Delinguo Max, a learning experience powered by GPT-4. And they've got several modes, but it says it gives learners all the benefits of Super, which is their actual, their previous subscription platform. But the new features in this Max platform that are powered by GPT-4 is explain my answer and role play. So you're going to be able to role play in a different language with an 
you know, AI, artificial intelligent chatbot that's powered by OpenAI's GPT-4 model. So we can scroll down and look into more detail here. This is what role play looks like. Great job, you're learning to conversate in French. I'll take a look at your writing and provide some helpful tips. And it continues um, to, you know, chat out in a little chat box, the lingo max, the little blackbird. Um, and we've been able to, you know, take a look at this technology that we have with GPT-4. It's powering platforms that are helping people learn, that's helping people, you know, be creative. And this is just one example of it with the Lingual's Max platform. So the AI is capable of, you know, helping you learn a new language. It's capable of role-playing with you and it's capable of explaining answers. And it's all built into technology that we can use in today's world. You can download the Dilingual app and use Dilingual Max by subscribing to it. And you have the full powers of GPT-4 in your hands. Be My Eyes uses GPT-4 to transform visual accessibility, which is really helpful for those that you know don't have uh, full visual capabilities in their eyes that can't see. They've got GPT-4. Uh, the AI can you know, detect things that's on images or in video, and then it can describe what is on you know, that, that photo or that video. And it's very powerful. Uh, so it says the difference between GPT-4 and other language and machine learning models is both the ability to have a conversation and the greater degree of analytical proudness offered by the technology. technology. So... Be My Eyes, super cool how it uses GPT-4 to transform visual accessibility. And if we scroll back here, we can take a look at some of the other ones here. Stripe has used it to analyze their user experience and combat fraud. Khan Academy, another learning example that has, you know, Khan Academy creates courses where you can learn and it explores the potential of GPT-4 in a pilot program where, you know, you can see the, the chat bot here. Can you tell me the answer it asks? And then it responds saying, hey, no, um, <laughs> what do you think you need to do to multiply two by five divided by 12? Um, and it's super powerful that, you know, it's using AI here to have that full on conversation with the learner. It's important that you learn to do this by yourself. That's a good thought. It's using real world conversation, you know, but in this case, you don't need to find a common denominator. This is something that you would think a human would have typed and responded with, but here we're talking to an artificially intelligent chatbot powered by OpenAI's GPT-4 in a real learning world scenario that's helping you, you know, it's being your best tutor. So Khan Academy has implemented GPT-4 in their, uh, you know, their platform today. So these are just a few cases of where ChatGPT has really empowered with this new model of GPT-4, a ton of new capabilities for developers, and it's their most advanced system, and it's just the beginning. This is a very big you know, time for OpenAI to release this because the possibilities are endless. More developers are gonna get their hands on this technology. It's gonna be in an apps that you use every day, and the best part about it is it feels real, it feels human, it helps us be more creative, it helps us solve difficult problems, and it's really awesome. So you can check out this technology at openai.com. Of course, if you subscribe to the chat GPT+, Plus, you can get access to the model today. And I think it's really going to change the world. It already has changed the world. It's going to continue to change the way that we innovate and we work together um, and collaborate when you have tools like this in our fingertips. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button. Comment below. Consider giving us a super thanks that helps out the AppFind channel. We really appreciate your support. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to know when we release our next video about OpenAI or artificial intelligence or technology. We're making videos every week and we'd love to be in your subscription box and we can't wait until you see our next video. So thanks again for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.